what we're doing today is talking about the circular flow diagram in national income accounting. You remember the uh, simple circular flow diagram we had in chapter two. Well, we're or unit two, we're expanding that significantly. Uh, let's talk for a moment about the factor markets. This is factors of production. You know, the first factor of production is labor. Those are the workers, but it's also the managers. And we pay labor in economic terms. We pay either wages or salaries, depending on the level of the person. Okay. Now, all production requires raw materials. It doesn't matter what we make, and ultimately all those raw materials come from the ground, whether it's uh, plastics made from petroleum products, or something made from wood from trees, or something made from metals from ore, or something that uses water or other chemicals. Okay? So all those raw materials come from the ground, and that ground is owned by somebody, and we pay the owners of land for their raw materials in economic terms we say we pay them rent okay now businesses in order to get started and to grow ne often need capital the money has to come from somewhere and money ultimately comes from people who save money whether it is the uh, entrepreneur who starts his own business using his own money and money he borrows from his family or whatever but the money comes from people and people are paid interest if they loan money or put it into a financial institution which in turn loans it out and is paid interest or if they invest as potential as stockholders in companies or as owners of companies then they're paid dividends we also call that profit okay? so we see that households are paid wages profit interest and rent from the factor markets ultimately that money goes directly to individuals from that money they must pay taxes to the government okay? and then what does the government do with that money they spend part of it to buy things both goods and services that's uniforms for the military that's guns and and ammunition and and, and uh, fuel and everything else that the government buys okay? also they take part of that money and they transfer it to other households an example would be social security payments being made to the elderly. Okay. Now, the disposable income that households have is that money that came in, that wages, profit, interest, and rent, and the government transfers that came in, minus the taxes that had to be paid out. That is disposable income. Now, what can consumers do with their disposable income? Well, they can buy things with it, both goods and services, and they can also save or invest part of that money going into the financial markets. So we find that the money coming into households, both government transfers and wages, profit, interest, and rent, will exactly equal the money going out in taxes, consumer spending, and private spending and investment. Yeah. Now, sometimes households don't quite have enough money to accomplish everything they want, and they will borrow money. An example of this is using your credit card or perhaps uh, a car loan or a mortgage on a new house. Uh, all this is private borrowing and the money comes from the financial markets. And when that money is repaid, now first off we consider that borrowing to be negative savings. So when you repay those loans or pay on them, that is considered savings. And we'll know more about that later. Now, sometimes the government's in the same situation. It doesn't have enough money to make all the transfer payments it wants and all the, buy all the goods and services, so it also has to borrow money from the financial markets. Okay? And where does the government get its money from? It gets it from taxes and from borrowing. Okay? Now, businesses also need that capital that we were talking about earlier. It's going to get that capital through the financial markets or through individual investors who buy stock, okay, which is also done through the financial markets. And what does the firms do with that money? They invest it in whatever it is they're going to be selling, whatever goods and services it is. So that goes into the market for goods and services. And when those things are purchased, that's what generates the gross domestic product number that we've talked about already. Okay. So and then from that money that the firms make as they collect that money uh, they pay out the wages dividends interest and rent okay. now we also 
will oftentimes sell things to foreign countries. So foreign countries buy from us. The arrow going into the goods market for goods and services shows money coming in where they have bought stuff. And we're not quite happy just buying from our own suppliers. We'll also buy from foreign countries, and we call those imports. And notice the arrow goes out to the rest of the world because that's the direction the money goes in. Okay, now, the term net exports, and you'll see this, uh, is the total of exports minus the imports. And what we're really measuring is how much money is coming into the country. So we take all the money we receive from exports, subtract from it all the money that we pay out in imports. And that's net exports. Okay? Now, uh, the gross domestic product that we've been talking about, there's a formula for computing that. And it is consumer spending. Again, don't panic when you see the formula. But the C stands for consumer spending. The G is government spending. The I is investment spending from firms. The X is all the exports, or the money we've taken in from exports. And the IM we subtract out is the imports, the money we spend on imports. Okay. Now, the financial markets sometimes don't have enough cash to accomplish all the uh, funds that they need to do. So they will take in money from private savings and investment. That's their only source of money. Okay. But they pay out money through government borrowing, private borrowing, and loan, uh, uh, firms borrowing and their stock issues. So if there's not sufficient funds, sometimes they will take in money from foreign lenders and foreigners who purchase stock in our companies. At the same time, we have situations where we loan money to foreigners and we buy stock in foreign country, companies. Okay, so that's the circular flow diagram. Here are some important takeaways. What is gross domestic product? And you see the formula for that, C plus G plus I plus X minus IM. We saw the factors of production are paid rent, wages, interest, and profit. We saw that net exports were exports minus imports. We saw that government gets its money from taxes and from borrowing. We saw that disposable income is all the money coming into the household. That's wages, profit, interest, and rent, plus government transfers minus the taxes they have to pay out. And we saw that the consumer's money coming in is always equal to the money going out. Okay, with that... And with that, uh, if we've covered the circular flow, and that's pretty much the end.